gentlemen, this is mixtures. How do you describe different mixtures? Uh, basically, what are mixtures? They are physically mixed together substances. They can be uh, both liquid, they could also be gases as well as solids. So substances can be physically combined and separated. So that means the process can be reversed. That makes it a physical change. So we're just changing it uh, physically, we're not changing what it's made of, we're just changing what the parts may look like. So you're taking things and mixing them together. There are three types of mixtures. There are solutions, there are colloids, and there are suspensions. Today we're going to be talking about all three of these, and they go in uh, terms of size And when we're talking about the mixtures. Solutions are the smallest size, colloids are in the middle, and suspensions are the largest. Alright, so uh, there's two terms that I want to talk about, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous means same or evenly dispersed. So it doesn't mean that they're made of the same thing, it means that within that um, it looks like one type. So examples of that might be Kool-Aid or, or uh, milk or corn syrup or other things like that. The parts are too small to see the separate um, them separated. Whereas heterogeneous, you see the parts. Okay, so you have different parts. As a result, you would think about things like fruit salad or uh, Chex Party Mix. Homogenous, they look as one, but they're separate at a much smaller level that we can't see them with the naked eye. So I can't see them with my without the aid of a microscope. That's what I mean by the naked eye. Solutions are the smallest of the mixtures. A solution is created, created when two substances mix and one substance dissolves into another substance. And so, for example, the most uh, prevalent one that I could see would be uh, Kool-Aid or m those types of drinks that you pour powder in and it, the sugar dissolves throughout. So, examples like that. Another example would be the air that we breathe. There's not just oxygen in there, but there's also hydrogen, there's also helium, there's also nitrogen that is mixed throughout, but you can't see it or grab it in that sense, but it's completely dispersed. It's a homogeneous mixture, equally dispersed throughout and uh, dissolve throughout the other substances. And we can't see them though because they're too small for us to see with our with the naked eye. So the solutions are uh, prevalent in there. Also different types of metals. And I don't mean just you know the elements but I also mean like different types of alloys. Like for example if you create uh, certain metal alloys they're if you create just metals in their purest form, sometimes they can be rather brittle. They can break easily. But what they do is, to make them stronger, what uh, engineers that have done is that they've actually melted down different metals together, and it creates a much stronger material. Then there's colloids. This type of mixture is where one substance is dispersed evenly throughout another. So dispersed, you know, if I think about dispersed, that means to separate. That means to get out of the way. And so dispersing evenly means that they are equally spread out through the substance. So an example of that would be like smoke or porcelain where you have, or uh, you could see parts of substances in water or milk or butter where you can't see the parts but you can see them with a microscope or you can see them by light. And we call this concept of separation uh, by light, the molecules, it's called the Tyndall effect. And what that means is that's the same reason why when you're going through fog and you use a flashlight, it separates out. Or the uh, different pieces of dust, they take the light and it disperses it or spreads it out by reflection on the malt, on the uh, different parts. So that's the Tyndall effect there. Some other examples here. I'm going to give you a moment to read those. We have some that are dispersed. 
um, in gases, dispersed in light, or uh, liquid, I'm sorry, and dispersed in solids. So take a look at some of those. There are many examples there. And then there are suspensions. These are the largest pieces where you can see them with the naked eye. And that means you can see them with uh, your own two beady eyes and you don't need a microscope. Uh, much larger than colloids or solutions. Okay. Oftentimes they'll separate when standing still. We call these heterogeneous mixtures, meaning that the parts are easily separate. And we can see them here. Examples are Italian... Uh, dressing, fruit salad, or gelatin and salad, in, or in, uh, sorry, fruits in there, and ranch dressing. Um, also, examples could be party mix or other things like that. They can also be unevenly mixed too. So, um, another example of that would be Tropicana uh, orange juice where there's lots of pulp and you have to shake it up so that otherwise it all settles down to the bottom. So, our little thing before you go, you need to correct this error that uh, Greg has here. And so you need to tell this person whether or not if uh, vanilla is a solution, colloid, or suspension. When you're done, you're going to put this into your Google form, and you're going to send that to me so that I know that you got this uh, homework done last night. So Greg Ginger Snap is convinced that vanilla ice cream is a suspension because he cannot see the parts of ice cream within the tub of that amazing dessert. So we can't see the parts, but you can see it with a microscope. Okay? And you can't see through it either. So correct his error that it's a suspension by identifying his mistake, and then tell me if it's a solution, a colloid, or a suspension. Now that's mixtures. I'll see you tomorrow for our class when we do our mixture mingle where we're going to be looking at all these different mixtures and identifying whether or not they're a solution, a colloid, or a suspension. See you tomorrow.